Hi, now here's an example then on using velocity time graphs. So if you haven't done this question already and want to have a go, just uh, pause the video, come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine. So what we've got here is a velocity time graph which represents the journey of a train P traveling along a straight horizontal track between two stations which are one and a half kilometers apart and the train P leaves the first station accelerating uniformly from rest for 300 meters until it reaches a speed of 30 meters per second and the train then maintains this speed for t seconds before decelerating uniformly at 1.25 meters per second per second coming to rest at the next station and what we've got to do in part A is find the acceleration of P during the first 300 meters of its journey. And then in part B, find the value of T. So to do something like this, what we've got to be familiar with is that the area under a velocity time graph represents displacement. So in other words, if our train left P, uh, our train P started at the station at rest. It traveled 300 meters whilst it was accelerating. There we go, it's here. So that means that this area in this triangle here is essentially 300 units. 300 meters it represents, that area there. Okay, so we'll just shade that there for you. Now, I can get the acceleration over the first 300 meters. That's represented, by the way, by this gradient here. But the quickest way of doing this problem is by using a SUVAT-based equation. We know u, the uh, initial velocity. We know v, the final velocity, is 30. We know s, the displacement, it's 300 meters. So we can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as, a formula that you should be familiar with. And if we use that, we've therefore got that the final velocity v, which is 30, so you've got 30 squared equals u squared, u was 0, so we could put that in as 0 squared, even though it's going to be 0, plus 2 times the acceleration a, that's what we're trying to find, and s is the displacement, which is 300. Okay, so all we've got to do then is just simplify this. We've got 900 for 30 squared equals 2 times 300, that's going to be 600 a. And if we just carry on down here. If we divide both sides by 600, what that means is that therefore A equals 900 divided by 600, and that turns out to be 9 over 6, or 3 over 2, or even 1.5. 1.5 meters per second per second. Okay, so that's our acceleration. Next, in part B, let's just come up through here. In part B, we've got to find the value of T, okay, from here to here. Now, before I can do that, what I'm going to need to do is find out what this distance here was. Because what I'm going to be doing is if we can find this distance here, I know that the total distance was 1,500 meters. That'd be the whole area here. So therefore, I should be able to then go on to find out T because I would then be able to work out the area of this rectangle. I'd know this distance and I know that the area is going to be 30 times T. So I should be able to get uh, T from that. So we need to work out this area here, the distance. What I know is that we're told that the train decelerated uniformly at 1.25 meters per second per second. So in other words, the acceleration over this stretch here, A we'll call it, is going to be negative, 
okay because it's decelerating it's going to be negative 1.25 okay meters per second per second so what I've got here is u our initial velocity 30 I've got our final velocity v which is 0 and I've got our acceleration minus 1.25 I just want to get s that would be the distance that it covered during this section here so again what we'd use is v squared equals u squared plus 2as so v the final velocity was 0 so therefore we've got 0 equals u squared u would be 30 so 30 squared plus 2 times the acceleration which is minus 1.25 and then we multiply that by s. So if we work this out, we've got 0 equals 900 here. And then 2 times minus 1.25 is minus 2.5. And that's multiplied by s. And if we rearrange this for s by, let's just say we add 2.5s to both sides. 2.5s would equal 900. And then divide both sides by 2.5. You get s equals 900 divided by 2.5. Work that out and you get 360. So the distance covered on this stretch here where the train is decelerating is going to be 360 meters. Okay, we'll just shade that in. That's that area given there. So now we know that the whole area underneath the graph here represents the distance traveled. We know that it's 1,500 meters. So I can say that therefore, if I consider the distance, we've got 300 and then plus this area in here, which is going to be the over rectangle, 30 times t, 30t, okay, plus this area here, 360 that total area which represents distance has got to come to 1500 so 1500 and if we add these two together that's going to be 660 take it away from 1500 that's going to leave us with 840 so we've got therefore 30t would equal 840 so if I divide both sides by 30 t would equal 840 divided by 30 work that out and you get exactly 28 okay so t is going to be a time of 28 seconds okay let's just put the units there 28 seconds so hope that's given you an idea on how to do that in fact we we'll just put that one in there as 840 meters okay so that'd be that area there that's given by that okay so if you want any further examples on using velocity time graphs don't forget you can always check more out on my website examsolutions.net Okay.